Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. So today I have a very exciting story to tell to you all. I meant what I said when I told you guys I'm back in full swing with what ifs. Here today is one of my most interesting and different ones of them all. What if the Nightwings fled to the Lost Continent? Instead of the tribe ending up on the volcano, what if some dragons took another route? This story is going to follow an original character, Spirit Finder, and how she lost her entire future from the act of one dragon, and how she'll eventually write her own. It's truly a beautiful tale, and I hope you guys enjoy what I have in store with this. It's definitely worth staying until the end for. A huge thanks to Solarwing for suggesting this idea, and to Bushkit for making the art. She absolutely outdid herself here with this beautiful thumbnail and video piece. There's a link to, to Bush's DeviantArt in the description if you want to see more of her works. But before we begin, a huge shout out to my patrons. Dark1195, Wild, Thistle, Noobtoe, Pyronuke, Avril, and Pancake. Thank you all so much for supporting me. Links to their social medias are in the description down below as well. Anyways, without further ado, let's get into the video. Pellets of rain thrashed wildly against Spirit Finder's face. They rolled off her snout in fat droplets, looking as though the sparkles under her eyes were crying tears of their own. The act of one dragon had just torn their kingdom apart. The moment the blood of Darkstalker's father began to gush down his neck in violent pulses, chaos had erupted in the crowd. An icy blue trickled onto the wooden stage, and the eyes of Arctic rolled far back into his head. One lifeless shudder, and the soul on the stage was no more. There had been no Nightwing who did not leave the auditorium screaming. Spirit Finder had seen the ravenous glimmer in Darkstalker's wide eyes, and heard the loud breath he exhaled. The deed had been done. He had taken pleasure in the murder of his father. Through the hazy thought Spirit could muster, she knew Darkstalker thought himself to be a hero for the tribe. But instead, he had created a rift. One that would separate him and every Nightwing forever. The violent shaking of her shoulder by familiar claws snapped Spirit Finder out of lifeless days. Her father had said nothing, but she could see the way he eyed the fleeing Nightwings in terror. Starweaver adjusted his glasses before pulling his daughter into the mass of midnight scales. Dragons shoved each other violently to pass through the theater's gates. Spirit felt the agonizing crunch of one of her ribs as a Nightwing slammed his shoulder blade into her chest. He squeezed past her, darting wildly with his eyes shut and head tilted to the floor. No one wanted to be the next victim of Darkstalker. He had seemed so princely and mighty only a day ago. Though Spirit Finder had not met him personally, she had spotted Darkstalker speaking with his new friends from her school's terrace. He met them in the gardens every afternoon, laughing and huddling close as they left the academy grounds. How could someone who seemed so full of love and respect commit an act of terror? Was magic truly so corrupting? Or was there something she had missed? Something everyone had missed? Spirit Finder broke off into a sprint as her father's pace grew faster. The mass of dragons dropped tears and shouts that rumbled the earth. Spirit's breasts increased as she felt warm, unfamiliar exhales on every inch of her body from the surrounding night wings. After seeing only black before her for what felt like an eternity, the ground finally began to split off. Agonizing screeches of parents realizing they were missing a dragonette ripped through her ear, sending waves through Spirit Finder's eardrums. A young mother pleaded at her talons, begging to know if the student had ever seen her baby. Spirit was left only to shake her head swallowing the thick bile that rose up her throat. Anything could have happened to a dragon who stopped for a moment in the Great Exodus, and it seemed like everything possible had. Starweaver's raspy breaths finally chilled to a stop. He glanced up at his daughter, taking notice of her eyes on his shaking scales. My baby, he began. Are you all right? Did anything- I'm okay, father, said Spirit. She moved an arm to place her weight on him, watching as his pupils returned to their normal size. A pit suddenly grew in Spirit Finder's chest. It eroded from deep within, caving like an avalanche that had been building for a crash. Where's Mother? Starweaver's next breath hitched in his chest. 
He darted his head around wildly, trying to notice his wife in the endless sea of darkened scales. She was watching from the exit gates, he said between labored breaths. Her leg had been aching and she could barely stand. She said she wanted to stay in a spot where she could leave if she needed to head home. Starweaver's face turned ghostly pale. You don't think... Spirit Finder shook her head in an attempt to soothe her own worries. Her crescent earrings jingled at the movement. Mother is strong. The second she saw a stampede, she would have gone somewhere safe. I know it. Sweat began to lick at Starweaver's forehead. The rain continued to pour swiftly from the heavens, showering every dragon and soaking their draining tears. You must go find her, Starweaver said suddenly. Spirit sucked in a large breath, her body motionless. But father... Starweaver wrapped his claw around his daughter's smooth talons. She could feel the warmth of his look from behind his thick glasses. She needs me, my ray of moonlight. Stay here. I'll make sure she's okay and return her to you. You two are my everything, Spirit. I cannot lose either one of you. Spiritfinder's words were caught in her throat. She felt her airway shut tightly and could not mistake the tear droplets forming in her eyes. After a soft blink, Starweaver took off into the crowd. His gray scales were lost in the mass of midnight. Spirit Finder's claws shook violently against her own command. She buried her face into her talons, her chest jerking into erratic rises and falls. One dragon had changed everything. The next time she felt a sharp grip on her shoulder, it was an unfamiliar one. Are you coming or not? Spirit Finder blinked away tears, her eyelids heavy. What? The nightwing in front of her almost seemed to roll his eyes. We're getting out of this kingdom, that's what. The queen wants to stay, but there's no way anyone is safe roaming in the same mountains that the Darkstalker lives in. What do you mean, getting out? Where would we even go? Spirit asked, trying to slow her breaths. Just before the nightwing could answer, a loud voice cried throughout the crowd. This is your last call for coming with us! Leave or become the Darkstalker's next prey! At the speaker's words, a few more dragons flocked to his side. They wore lines of worry on their faces, mere echoes of the Nightwing spirit had seen only hours before. She recognized a few of them. Some were her classmates, standing all alone. Others were dragons who looked around in a frenzy, still trying to spot their loved ones in the crowd. The Nightwing who had spoken to her, Destiny if she remembered his name, shoved Spirit Finder forward. Her limbs shook heavily against the sudden movement, and Spirit's head pounded and lurched. In a single heartbeat, she was now on the other side, a scared Nightwing looking at apprehensive faces. We're going anywhere but here, the speaker continued. Leave with us now or risk perishing in the Darkstalker's talons. Bright flashes of lightning clouded Spiritfinder's vision. Voices screamed for loved ones or shouted commands at those who stood quietly. Before she knew it, a rough claw grabbed her by the arm. She slid forward against the rocks that crumbled beneath her feet. Dragons had begun to take off from the coast. Against the lashing winds, wings flapped and kicked up merciless air. The rain had started to fall harder, its oceans from above pouring unforgivingly on spirit scales. She could hardly keep her eyes open. Time did not freeze. In fact, it sped faster than she even had time to process. Moments no longer seemed to last in eternity. They were over in the fraction of a breath. In one swift movement, Spirit Finder found herself being dragged into the air by dark scales. She adjusted her wings, trying to keep herself upright against the howling world. The dragon who had taken her off the rocky coast glided forward, now blending in with the small group of dragons before her. Spirit Finder's world felt tilted, her stomach raw and face slick. All she could do was follow, and she had no idea why she left. The cries of dragons were far out of view by the time Spirit Finder and the others landed on a quiet island. Their talons touched, touched silky sand that moved away at their weight. Nightwings let out gasps at their first feeling of warmth since leaving the continent. It was after Spirit's blistered wings finally got rest that her brain began to clear. Endless flying had led, led them somewhere she could barely register. Her eyes adjusted to the light that peered from the clouds that slowly lost their color. A few Nightwings reunited with loved ones, but most dragons stood alone. It took Spirit Finder several minutes to realize she was alone, too. Everything had happened so fast. The tugging on her arm, the wind beneath her wings. 
The only clarity and way to ground herself to any form of serenity had led her here. Away from everything. Away from everyone. The voices of the nearby nightwings were low. No one could manage more than a whisper. And if spirit were being honest, they did not want to speak any higher. No one even had a word to say. The journey to their first place of rest was merely a daze as the sounds and smells of home faded. Spirit Finder had a sinking feeling that she would never be home again, and did not take her long to realize that she was right. Grave Morrow, an elderly seer, began to take charge. Those visions were faint with age. He swore to lead every Nightwing on that island to safety. Whether they might go to flee Darkstalker and they had to leave it all behind, the dragons in the group would have his protection. There were around thirty in the group. Spirit recognized most of them, classmates, teachers, and some neighbors, though they were nothing like the dragon she had seen only a day ago. Her clawmates switched nervously, their eyes glued to the sand below. Spirit Finder wondered if they were like her, having lost their futures too. Almost everyone went to bed alone that night. Spirit Finder tucked her snout under a palm leaf, fidgeting anxiously to the side. She had never been in a place so silent. Even though several dozen Nightwings still laid on the beach, when Spirit Finder closed her eyes, it felt like there were none. After so many hours of flying, each day melted into the next. Some dragons said they could not make it any longer, but Gravemore reminded everyone that each patch of land they touched was no home for dragons. Every island seemed smaller than the last, and Spirit Finder fell into a dreamful sleep when a new dragon curled up silently next to her, lost in a world of their own. The stars were often their only source of light across the day spent in the sky. Spirit felt the sea's sticky air brush against her face, and the gentle lull of the ocean's air kept her afloat in the heavens. In truth, she could not tell how long it had been until they saw their escape. Perhaps it had been weeks, maybe even months, maybe every year of her life. But finally, just as Spirit Finder's thoughts began to drift, to sinking into the endless abyss of sea below, the murmurings of Nightwings pointed out the coast ahead. They had finally found their escape. From the sky, Spirit Finder saw how pieces of land jutted out of the new continent like teeth from an unforgiving jaw. Upon taking sight of the endless sea of thick jungles that lay ahead, Spirit wondered if the territory would swallow her whole. She would not doubt that it could. The Nightwings finally made contact with the rocky coast. Some landed slowly, apprehensive upon seeing a land they did not know, whereas others melted into the dew-filled grass, letting their claws soak up the dirt. It was a stark contrast from the dozens of islands, each a mirror of the last. Before long, Grave Morrow and several others kindled a fire on the edge of the land. Its smoke woke a few Nightwings out of their dazed torpor as they inched closer to the flickering flames. Even from several paces away, Spirit Finder felt the bellowing heat. She let it ride smoothly off her scales, closing her eyes to escape the reality of the world they were stuck in. A world with no future. The Grave Morrow never spoke of what lay ahead for the Nightwings who flew with him. Everyone knew the truth. Nothing would ever be the same again. Spirit Finder try tried quelling the spike of restlessness that ate away at her thoughts. Leaning closer to the light of the fire, she let her eyes drift shut and prayed to the moons for her first dreamless night. Spirit did not know it awoke her. Perhaps it was the rustling of an animal in the nearby woods, or the tricklings in her brain from a nightmare that left her breath strained. The memories of its haunting dissipated faster than she could cling on, though Spirit Finder was grateful she could not remember the dream's torture. It was probably for the best. Her moment of rest was quick. Despite how the young dragon desperately wished to fade away from her reality once more, she knew it would be impossible for that night. Her eyelids never stayed shut, every cricket causing her glaze to flicker to its source. She stared placidly at the sleeping forms of nightwings huddled together on the rocks. Their chests rose and fell in long, peaceful movements. They deserved the rest, Spirit Finder thought to herself. She just wished she could join them in their mind's paradise. Spirit Finder traced the outlines of stars with her vision until she finally acknowledged that there would be no more sleep for her that night. She gracefully slid to, 
to rest her elbows firmly on the dirt, eyeing the tree line that they all laid so close to. The leaves of trees rustled gently in the small breeze, though Spirit's breath stopped as she thought of what was inside the woods. The darkness in the gaps of the jungle reminded her of her father's own scales, and Spirit Finder wondered where he was right now. Did father find mother? What did both of them think when they saw I was not where I should have been? Where I promised father, where I said I would wait? I never should have let the moment overwhelm me. I never should have taken off into that darkened sky. I am away from everything and everyone I have ever loved, and I fear if I will have the strength for tomorrow. Spirit Finder's eyes met the jungle's beginning once again. She wanted to be anywhere than here. The place she was left only to her thoughts. And so, she slowly stood on the rocky coast. Sliding through the mass of sleeping bodies, Spirit let herself slink into the line of trees. She took one final glance back at Gravemore on the others, and hoped she would return before they awoke. She just needed time in a hopefully familiar forest to rest. As Spirit Finder would soon discover, however, the jungle that claimed this side of the continent was far from anything she had ever seen, even on the page of a scroll. Thick roots seemed to tug at her talons, almost as though one wrong step would send her plummeting into the land beneath her feet. The young Nightwing shivered slightly as a new wind lapped at her dark scales. Slight slithers wrapped around every corner. Spirit held her head low, eyeing the unfamiliar territory with unease. The jungle continued on endlessly, new colors of creatures darting out of the dragon's vision. If I can just make it to a clearing... Suddenly, a fiery pain shot across Spirit Finder's thigh. She whirled to the side as her flesh was caught between a small panther's teeth, its jaw tightening on her leg, ripping away at her scales ravenously. Spirit let out a loud breath, twisting her thigh and kicking wildly, she had to move the creature away. If I use my fire, the entire jungle will burn. It's too risky, she thought desperately. After several long seconds, the panther finally removed his canines from Spirit's flesh. It gave a small hiss before retreating off into the trees, its purple eyes reflecting against the pale moonlight that made it through the canopy. Spirit felt herself choke. Her leg was bruised and bloody, with tissue poking out of the top. Blood began to pool inside the wound, leaking onto the grass below. Dizziness overtook the Nightwing's vision. She felt herself sway to the side within seconds, an inky blackness threatening to claim her consciousness. She blinked heavily, but the spots only grew larger at her efforts. Despite all she tried to stay awake, Spiritfinder felt her mind disconnect from her body. Everything grew dark before her body even made a thud against the ground. The first thing Spirit noticed was the taste of copper on her tongue. Her eyes felt sore beneath her eyelids, and she fought to keep them shut as she rubbed her tongue against her teeth. It only took a few moments of awareness for Spirit Finder to finally blink awake. She gasped, breaths ragged and sore in her lungs. What? Patches of darkness faded out of her view as time quickly passed. Spirit Finder rose halfway, positioned on her elbows. Her vision less hazy than before, Spirit could make out the trees that loomed overhead. The moon's silver rays were still high above the canopy, trickling in natural light. A fire pit was mere feet from where she had been lying. What happened? The dragonette must have said her last thought out loud, much to her own dazed embarrassment, seeing as someone responded out of the darkness. Old language, said a firm voice. At her shifting, a dragon stepped from the leaf bed he had been seated on. Big, round eyes came close to the spirit finder, blinking gently. The Nightwing had never seen anything like him before. His scales were bright orange, with trickles of lack markings that reminded Spirit of a bumblebee. Thick antennae rested on the top of his head, twitching slightly at every kick of the breeze in the air. He looked at Spirit Finder with curiosity and apprehension, his soft gaze fell on her leg wound. Spirit, remembering the aching of the injury, moved a talon to touch the white wrapping that was tugging at her flesh. No touch! The mystery dragon said quickly, No touch it. His words sounded foreign, despite coming from the lips of something akin to her kind. He shook his head rapidly before she had the chance to lay a claw in the area. At her pausing, he let out a quiet breath. Old language true. That you speak. 
Spirit Finder only stared at him, the forest and the severity of her wound no longer important to her. Are we not on Pyria? She asked slowly. The orange dragon hesitated. Dragon with scale like yours came by. Spoke same. Others in village talked about her. Said she knew Storm. You know the dragon? I... Spirit Finder could barely form a thought. The strange dragon noticed her slowness and eyed the wound. Venom Panther, he said finally. Bite victim with danger and come back later. You would have been eaten soon. Spirit Finder flinched at his words, truly realizing how much her bandaged thigh stung. Feels better at the pressure of his wrappings, she noticed. The two sat in silence, the orange dragon appearing antsy, as though he yearned to say more. Spirit Finder swallowed dryly before looking up at him again. Thank you for rescuing me, she said. I've never been here before. We didn't have that kind of wildlife in my home. Dragon's gaze shifted to the south earth beneath his talons. Where from? he asked, making his gruff voice sound small. It did not take much for Spirit to understand that he was young too. I come from the Nightwing tribe on Pyria. We have had an amazing kingdom. There were libraries with shelves that seemed to reach the stars. Every street corner smelled like pastries and ink. Our buildings were beautiful, and carved out of every rare rock on the continent. I loved it there. My house was small, but perfect. I went to the greatest school for non-empowered Nightwings. Father and mother worked so hard to keep me going there. They knew how much I loved learning and seeing into the world. Not just watching it, but being part of everything that made it great. Learning about why life is special. Spirit Finder knew the dragon understood very little. Still, through her wandering tones, grateful reminiscing, and the few words he remembered, the orange dragon found his mind trickling into thoughts and imaginations of his own. He imagined every spire in brick. Why go? he asked suddenly. Spirit tilted her head to the side at his question. Why leave place so good? he asked. She had understood his question. Its answer, however, seemed impossible to give. We had no choice is what I want to say, Spirit Finder began. But we let fear cloud our judgment and make our decisions. I have dreamed of my home and everything, every one we all left behind. I wish I never would have taken off on the coast. I shouldn't have let somebody take me somewhere I didn't want to go. I shouldn't have let the moment decide a new future for me. The orange dragon said nothing. She only nodded slowly, the movement so small, Spirit Finder wondered if she had imagined it. Sorry, he said at last. I lose home too. Spirit Finder frowned, feeling her eyes start to tear with a look of sadness in the young dragon's face. Despite his obvious youth, his scales were worn with stress and streaked with sorrow. A million tears had been cried on his cheeks, though he dared not let one slip around the strange nightwing. Hey, Spirit Finder said, moving to lay on her side. The adjustment took pressure off her leg, the feeling alleviating. I've never asked. What's your name? She wanted him to know that she saw him as a dragon, a living, breathing individual with a life and purpose. Something that the way he stood made Spirit Finder believe he had not been treated similarly before, and even the idea broke her heart. The orange dragon paused, thinking deeply. What you would call Oriole. Huh, Spirit Finder thought. He looks more like an insect with the way his wings slick back into four, but... I can see the gracefulness and curiosity of an animal that yearns to see and live life behind his eyes in the sky. I like that name. I'm a spirit finder, the Nightwing said. Oriole smiled, the sight filling her with warmth. It echoed a deep serenity throughout spirit scales, settling firmly in her heart. The dew had only one moment of peace before a shout rippled across the trees. Spirit finder! Spirit finder! The dragon recognized the voice's owner immediately. All those knights laying on the sand, the spider torpor, one dragon's command held her to cling to reality. I I have to go, Spirit Finder stammered. In a matter of seconds, Oriole nodded, his scales disappearing into the bundles of flowers and roots underneath the canopy. If she had not felt the warmth of his gaze, Spirit would have thought their whole moments together to have been a dream. Spirit Finder! There you are, Grave Morrow said, panting. 
Upon noticing the bloody wrapping on her leg, his head started up wildly. Who? What? Don't worry, she said. I... I tripped on a root. I always carry bandages in my satchel, so I sat here and made a fire. I'm all right, sir. Cravemore looked as though he did not believe her, but said nothing. Why were you all the way out here? Moonstone woke up in the middle of the night and noticed you were no longer at her side. You cannot scare us like that. We need every night when we have. Spirit Finder wondered vaguely if Oriel was watching and listening to the moment that transpired. In truth, she hoped he was miles away from hearing the disappointment that waxed through Grave Morrow's grimly voice. I just needed to clear my head. I'm sorry, Grave Morrow. It won't happen again. Grave Morrow suddenly grew silent, his face overtaken with regret. He drooped his, his wings rather loudly, aged skin wearing at every movement. No, I'm sorry, Spirit Finder. I should have known you would need time to process. All of us do, in truth. The old Nightwing sighed, moving to stand closer to Spirit. Just next time, let one of us know, okay? We'll start exploring the forest in groups when the sun rises. There's still time to get back to the, the camp and rest. Spirit Finder nodded, standing slowly. Grave Morrow took most of her weight, tilting to the sides so that her wounded thigh stayed clear of his scales. Upon returning to the small settlement on the beach, Spirit Finder found that she could do anything but sleep. A million thoughts ravaged her brain at every second, even when she slipped her eyes closed to feign rest. Where even are we? How did Oriole lose his home? Why does he look so different compared to any dragon I've ever seen? And will I ever even see him again? Deep down, Spirit Finder hoped she would. It's been a long time since I've seen such an inviting smile and curious eyes. He seems almost like me. Brave Morrow's plan came to fruition in the morning. Despite the small amounts of Nightwings present, each dragon was sorted into a group. Everyone took turns exploring the vast forest of the new continent, reporting back with findings of river bodies and tree types. It soon became apparent just how far the group was from Peria. New soils and climates reigned in the land, unlike anything the Nightwings had read or heard of. With each returning group, Spirit Finder dreaded hearing of them encountering orange and black scales. To her surprise, however, no one mentioned seeing another dragon. Spirit finally breathed when the final scouting troops before hers came back with information about spores and vines rather than new scales. When she wandered further into the woods with her selected dragons, all signs of Oriole and his camp were gone. The jungle had reclaimed its firewood, and the familiar trees cast their shadows elsewhere. With a burning wick of hope, Spirit Finder wished that the mysterious dragon would come again. As the, end, as the day ended, she rested her head against palm leaves and stone and fell into a dream-fueled slumber. Frantic shaking and cool, smooth talons suddenly met Spirit Scales. She woke with a sharp gasp, perking her head up. Upon seeing the dragon mere inches from her face, she immediately hushed every breath. Oriole was at the Nightwing camp. He silently pointed at the jungle's edge, looking back and forth from the trees of spirit. Are you crazy? She mouthed, though knew he understood none of her words. Spirit lifted her head further, gaze darting to eye every sleeping dragon. No one heard him. Carefully, she slipped out from underneath the dragon's starlit wing. Finally on her feet, Spirit Finder followed Oriole, who smiled at her sticking to his trail. He really is crazy, the young Nightwing thought breathlessly. She couldn't help but admire his determination to see her, even knowing what it might bring to him if he were spotted. As soon as they were out of earshot from the camp, Spirit Finder finally breathed. What was that? she said, her voice a blend of fear and amusement. Oriole blinked back at her innocently, sticking at the same pace. Found, was all he said, the answer satisfying himself, though definitely not spirit. She groaned playfully, shaking her head. If Grave Morrow saw you, he probably would have lit you on fire. You were very lucky tonight. The two kept walking, their shadows hanging peacefully behind them, beneath the moon's faded rays. Actually, she continued, he'd saute me for sneaking out again. Oriole giggled at her tone and body language. 
I wonder how much he really understands, Fiora thought suddenly. Communication is more than just words. Maybe the dragons of his tribe also had fiery revenges the teen spoke of. That's actually an interesting thought. I wonder what Oriel's life was before he came all the way out here. Maybe he'll tell me someday. Without warning, the orange and black dragon took off into a run. He trampled the roots and leaves beneath his talons, scalloping over every inch of land. Hey! Spiritfinder shouted. Where are you going? You see! Oriel yelled back, a self-satisfied smirk flashed on his face. He turned forward before he could see Spirit's look of shock as she struggled to keep up with him in the, ma the fast-moving jungle. Oriel laughed, leading her further into the heart of the canopy. The world around Spirit spun, remaining as only flashes of color in her vision. She kept up, despite the aching of her dried leg wound. After it felt like hours, Oriel finally came to a stop. He stared off at something hidden behind a hedge. After Spirit Finder finally arrived at his side, panting, both earrings twisted, the orange dragon motioned to the area behind the brush. Spirit's ocean eyes fell on a sight greater than anything in the world. Moonlight reflected on a bubbling stream, its water sliding down from the stems of large plants. There was an opening in the canopy that let, left everything under the sky so bright. Each blade of grass and mound of untouched dirt seemed to sparkle beneath, sparkle beneath the stars. It's beautiful, Spirit Finder said breathlessly. Her muscles lost all tension and weight at the harmonies of frogs and fireflies. The kingdom of night was stunning, but all its beauty came from the artificial. Her ancestors had ripped trees from their roots to place the buildings that lined every street. But here, out in the middle of the jungle, untouched by harmful talons, life flourished. Oriel smiled bigger than he ever had at Spirit's satisfaction. Told so, he said playfully. Spirit Finder continued to take in the serenity and isolation of the place until a splash of water met her smooth scales. In a moment, she was now head first in the rippling stream. Hey! Oriel began laughing, his claw and arm outstretched. Needed swim, he said with a shrug. Spirit Finder shot up, tackling the orange dragon into the moving waters with her. He shouted words from his language in protest, but the young Nightwing could not take anything he said seriously while he stifled large, unending giggles. They tossed each other around in the water, every scale soaked in its coolness. The pair of dragonets headed out of the canopy, balancing on fallen logs and dodging the hungry tongues of carnivorous plants. Their night was wordless under the stars. Hours passed of playful fighting and stump climbing. Oriel mimicked what Spirit thought to be a queen or leader, using huge sticks for swords. Their laughter rang through the trees, and after an eternity of bliss, both dragons collapsed in a heap on the cool grass of the jungle. They were back where they started, only starlight illuminating the sky. Peaceful rumblings were all that could be heard in the stillness. That was amazing, said Spirit, stretching out on the dirt. Oriel nodded at her excitement, moving to lie on his back. Oh, was all he said. Even in just the one word from her language, Spirit Finder knew there were memories and lives hidden within the sentiment. The Nightwing and Orange Dragon stayed quiet for a long time, glancing up at the dark sky. After a long while, Oriel finally spoke. Face scales of yours are pretty, he said. They look like midnight sky stars. A smile spread across Spirit Finder's face. The markings under her eyes sparkled beneath the moon at every shifting of the dragonette scales. My home had a lot of stars, she said softly. Oriel turned to face her, staring directly into Spirit's sea-laced eyes with gentleness. The Nightwing sucked in a breath before continuing. The place I come from is full of amazing schools, but even there, I don't even think our greatest writers could have made a scroll about somewhere like this, or someone like you. And every night after classes, I would sit in my room and look out the window pane. The night sky was full of stories and stars that guided us. And every night, I kept my curtains open so that the moonlight could watch over me and bathe me in its beauty. But here, there are no walls. The starlight is all around me, all around us. Spirit Finder continued to gaze above. She hesitated before adding more, but knew she must. We left to escape someone terrible. 
and on that day, I had no idea that the last look I would have at my tribe would be one of terror. I never knew the night before would be the last one in my bed. I assumed I would see my teachers the next day, and I never said goodbye. Not to anyone. We all thought things would stay the same. I mean, we were Nightwings. We were the greatest tribe on Pyria. The strongest, the fastest, the bravest, the smartest. Nothing would ever happen to us. We had the most brilliant hybrid on our side. He cured ailments and loved his mother, sister, and girlfriend. I saw him leave his quarters every day when school let out. And in truth, I miss everything about my home. I miss the wind chime in my house's doorway and the way it sang songs whenever my father arrived home from his studio. I miss the way he would kneel down and greet my mother with a warm smile on her bed. She had been injured many years ago, but in recent months, it had become infected. She could not work, but Star Reaver didn't care. He never complained now that we were only under an artist's salary. He didn't care when he sent me off to school each day, knowing the bills the next month would be more than he could bear with his normal hours. He's who and what I miss the most. The last thing I did before leaving the continent was not obey the promise I made. I let the moment control my actions, even when he told me to stay. But I never knew that would be the last moment I saw my father, that the wrinkles of fear under his eyes would be imprinted within my skull forever. I do not know where he is now, but I am left only to imagine the face of terror when he saw my wings soaring off in the distant stormy sky, the way he felt helpless, hopeless, upon seeing my dark scales not being where I should have stayed. In Oriole, I will never see him again. That I know. I will never again experience all the things I took for granted back in my city. Even the annoying things. Even the burdens. In truth, I should have loved all of it and seen my life for the paradise it was. Spirit Finder breathed softly. My future was planned to every degree. I knew of the dragon I was supposed to marry and fall in love with. I knew the class I was supposed to take in my final year of schooling at the academy. I knew the exact career path I was to go in and prepare for. I even had everything set in place for my apprenticeship. Every detail, down to the food I would eat each night in my married life, was written in stone. Everybody lived that way. We knew the future, or so we thought. But I'm not guaranteed tomorrow here anymore. I never was. It was foolish to believe that any dragon, seer or not, knows how life will go, or when the last time they will see their loved one is. I wish my tribe did not have to learn in such a way. And I wish I could say that I'm a saint who never took anything in life for granted. But even I complained in paradise. Everybody does. I don't know what tomorrow will bring. I don't even know if I will have a tomorrow. But I know I want it to be with you. Oriole fell silent for many minutes. He furrowed his brow deep in thought, translating as many words as he could from his memory of the Nightwing's thoughts. After a long while, he faced her again, his pale eyes sparkling. Loved home of mine, too, he said. Yours sounded beautiful and like the scale stars on your face. Spirit Finder felt flushed at his comment, blinking rapidly as her heart thumped harder than it ever had before that night. Oriole inched closer, his breasts only a talon away from her. We'll show you, Night Dragon, the home of mine. Pretty like this, too. Oriole pointed at the scenery around them. The story is sad, but important. They were like you, I know it, and maybe like me again, too, someday. Spirit Finder knew she would live a thousand memories in his moonlit eyes. Her breasts rose in anticipation for what the future would bring. After weeks, months of thinking she had nothing ahead of her at all, a new door had opened. There was a kingdom on a lost continent to explore, and a dragon to get to know everything about. I'd love to see her home, she said at last. For the first time since flying off that coast, Spirit Finder felt peace. The other Nightwings... They'll make a home here, too, she thought to herself as she let her eyes flutter closed in Oriole's embrace. We don't have to leave behind what we lost in order to move forward. We can take our mistakes and mold them into a greater future, one that we don't just assume will happen based on our own plans or supposed visions. We'll sculpt a life of our own, one that no dragon can take away from us. At that thought, Spirit Finder finally let herself fall into a dreamless sleep and she was finally excited for the sunlight that would soon meet her eyes.
And that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you so much to amazing people that stuck around until the end. I really hope you enjoyed this story just as much as I loved working on it. What was your favorite part? Let me know down below. Thank you all so, so, so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!